welcome back to another episode of College Town Talk. I'm Shan Stout. And I'm Jonathan Frank. Now, Jonathan, can you believe we are recording our 25th episode of this podcast? Hey, if this podcast were a person, it'd be old enough to rent a car. (laughs) That's one way to think about it. Now, speaking of celebrating the podcast, we've got two outstanding guests to celebrate with today. We sure do. We're talking to Chelsea D'Artez, the founder and publisher of Cookville Lifestyle Magazine, and Dr. Helen Hunt, the director of Tennessee Tech's Women's Center and an associate professor of English here at Tech. Now, Chelsea has an incredible story of success. She was a publicist in the music industry, and then she took that expertise into launching a magazine from the ground up. The spring issue is on newsstands now, and it is not to be missed. She is amazing for many reasons, not the least of which is she had the brilliant idea to bring you on, Shan, as a contributing writer. I always enjoy reading your nature spotlight in each issue of Cookville Lifestyle. You've got a great Upper Cumberland camping guide in this latest issue. Even I enjoyed reading it. And, you know, my idea of camping is usually like a hotel without free Wi-Fi. Well, you and I are probably in the same boat there. Now, let's talk about Dr. Helen Hunt. She is pretty amazing, too. You know, being an English professor and running the Women's Center at Tennessee Tech would each be plenty demanding on their own. But she does both of those things and she makes it look effortless. But we definitely know it is not. Let's go ahead and kick things off. Up first, it's our conversation with the founder and publisher of Cook the Lifestyle, Chelsea D'Artes. I'm so excited about our next guest. She is known for spotlighting Cookville's movers and shakers and most influential people as the founder and publisher of Cookville Lifestyle, the Upper Cumberland's leading lifestyle magazine. But the truth is, in our book, she is the mover and shaker. She is also a most influential person and so, so much more. So, of course, we are talking to the multi-talented Chelsea D'Artes about her journey to Cookville, starting a magazine from scratch, and her years in the music industry. So, a powerhouse woman. She is truly one of the special people making Cookville Tennessee's college town. Chelsea, welcome to College Town Talk. Thank you, so guys, so much for having me. Now, Chelsea, there's so much we want to ask you today, and I was so excited when I saw your name come up in our list of interviewees, but we want to talk about the new issue of the magazine, but let's start at the very beginning. Now, before you created Cookville Lifestyle, you were making a name for yourself as a sought-after publicist. And you worked in the music industry as a leader with clients such as Rascal Flats, Lone Star, the Oak Ridge Boys, Clay Walker, and Tennessee Tech's very own Jake Hoot. So this is a really powerful list. Tell us about those years in the music scene and how you then translated that expertise into starting a magazine. Yeah, um, I am very thankful for my years in the music industry. I went to Belmont and majored in music business and then started a PR and marketing company when I was 21 um, in Nashville. And we got to work with really awesome artists over the years. And we got to really, you know, book some big national media spots for them and media tours. So I definitely think um, that prepared me for any crazy obstacle that could ever come my way. (laughs) Um, cause working with artists is fun, but it can be a challenge. So, um, and when you're trying to book a big national television show, like the today show or something, you know, things can pop up and, you know, so I think I learned really well how to just deal with everything calmly and just easily put out fires and that type of thing. And then also I clearly worked alongside the media, um, with, big magazines like Us Magazine, um, People, things like that, of that nature. So I kind of saw, I took different things I liked that each one of them were doing when I would have my clients, you know, interview with them or be profiled by them. And I brought that into creating the magazine. And I left the music industry because I moved, my husband got transferred to Cookville and it just became a little much having to go to Nashville all the time still when I had 
two babies at home. And so I decided I needed to figure out a way to be able to stay in Cookville all the time. So, well, we are certainly glad that you did. This was a very good decision. And uh, apparently you're now trained to work with any divas that come across uh, Cookville. <laughs> yeah, for now, some Cookville people might be more difficult than my artist. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Well, you're very malleable and easygoing, and this explains why you are very well trained. <laughs> Chelsea, it is pretty incredible how in less than two years, you've built Cookville Lifestyle into something that is already so uh, recognized and appreciated here in Cookville. I, I want to go back to that first issue you put out. You started out with a most influential people issue. Uh, featuring someone we all admire, C.G. England, on the cover. Uh, you interviewed uh, tech president and, and first lady, uh, Dr. Phil and Carrie Oldham, for, for that feature. You know, nowadays, if you were wanting to interview someone for the magazine, it'd be pretty easy to, I mean, ch well, chances are, first of all, they would have already heard of it. But if they hadn't, you can show them previous issues to kind of establish credibility, say, this is what we do, this is what the magazine looks like. Uh, you couldn't do that for that first issue. So was it hard to get people to sit down and talk with you? And how challenging was that to put that first issue together? Yeah. So to get people to sit down and talk to me was interesting. I had to really make it look professional when I was reaching out to them. Um, but they were all taking a leap of faith, the people that were featured in the Most Influential People first edition. But I will say every single person that I reached out to and said, Hey, I'm doing this. I would like for you to be involved. They all showed up for the photo shoot. I mean, we had huge people in it from the president of Tennessee tech, him and his wife, um, to CG, who was our cover. And CG told a story once that she kind of thought, what in the world am I, did I sign up for it? What am I going to do? <laughs> she had no clue when she showed up for the photo shoot. But luckily they, we met, we did the photo shoot. I try to set it up in a very professional way where people feel comfortable and they get hair and makeup done. So it's not just some rinky dink thing that we're throwing together. So I think that kind of eased everyone. And then I had known a few of the people from working with Jay Coot in the music industry in Cookville. And so I think that helped because I knew some of those uh, people already on a personal level. Um, but as far as just getting the magazine off the ground, it was very difficult in the beginning. I had a lot of people that told me no about even distributing the magazine in their business because I went just door to door and just asked people, I'm starting this magazine. Can I put it in your business? Because I, for, in my mind, that was my first step is knowing where it was going to be distributed. And um yeah, a lot of people told me no, and now I have more distributors than I need. <laughs> so um, it, it's funny. But then, you know, after that, I had to convince people to buy advertising because that's what pays for the magazine. And it's hard to convince people to buy into something that has never that's brand new, you know, and they don't know if it's going to be worthwhile for them. So I feel I feel very blessed that people trusted me um, in the beginning. And yeah, it was difficult. But We've just built from there and, you know, it, things have gotten a lot more streamlined and I, I'm very grateful. Well, Jonathan and I kind of sidebarred before we uh, got on the podcast today talking about how very smart and intuitive your business model is. You're engaging not only the people that you're representing and highlighting in the magazine, but you're truly representing these businesses in such a strong way that are your sponsors and, and your advertisers. So it's just really, really, you do this great launch party. I mean, it's wonderful. But I want to talk about uh, the new issue. Um, this was a really big deal. You came out with the spring 2024 issue featuring none other than Cookville's very own Judah Akers of Judah and the Lion on the cover. And this, I mean, this came out in a really good time as well, because what you don't know, I was at the governor's conference a few weeks prior and they were talking about how Judah and the Lion were going to be featured in some mass Tennessee tourism, like Tennessee vacation commercials, using his music and really pushing him forward, elevating what his brand is in relation to Tennessee. I mean, he really got a ton of press. And then you were capturing the Cookville Lifestyles issue at the same time. So you didn't know it. You were in tandem with the state of Tennessee. Y'all were both on the same page. <laughs> but Judah and the Lion, we know that they've been at the top of the Billboard charts and performed on the Today Show, 
Jimmy Kimmel Live, and then Late Night with Seth Meyers, of course, just to name a few. Um, it makes us all proud being from here to see one of our own succeed like this. And we know that you're a pretty hard person to say no to, but how did you make this interview happen? Well, it had been something that I wanted to do from the start of the magazine. I, I kind of want to feature one like celebrity status person that has ties to Cookville a year. And um, I know Judah's dad. Um, so I had been talking with him for a while about my ideas and stuff, but I think the ball got rolling when his dad gave me his manager's email. And after a few attempts at contacting them, um, he got back to me. So I am, you know, delicately pushy at times. Um, and uh, we we got the ball rolling. And, you know, I um, coordinated the photo shoot. And I think that we we were going into it with the best of intentions for Judah. We weren't trying to do anything racy or anything like that. We were just trying to celebrate him in his hometown, which I feel like was overdue um, in Cookville. He hadn't really done anything here in a while. And it lined up perfectly with his album launch that's coming out in a couple months. So I think that everything just aligned really, really well for this. And I think my background in the music industry helped me to navigate how to work with his team um, and, you know, what to do and what not to do as far as the photo shoot and just communication. You don't want to scare people off. And a lot of times when you're working with regional media outlets on that, with that scale of an artist, it can be a turn off for them if, you know, things just aren't handled the right way. So I kind of knew with my background how to approach it. So I'm so excited that it all worked out perfectly. No, I had no clue about the Tennessee tourism thing. That's amazing. And then we we uh, proclaimed Judah Acres Day. We got that passed with the mayors and all the things. So I feel like it was it was just a great celebration of Judah. And the cover was so powerful. I think that's another thing with an artist. They're, they're afraid of how a local outlet will represent them or the lack of representation, like, you know, harm their image in some way by just being uh, poorly shot or poorly represented. Um, and you do not do that. You can tell that you have a background that understands the assignment. And yes. it was a stunning cover, stunning inside article. Um, all your photography is always on point and so professional. I think that's truly what sets your magazine apart because it doesn't look like a local magazine. It looks like a national magazine. And that seems like that's where you're setting your bar. Yes, for sure. Thank you for saying that. Yeah, I think brand recognition is so important. And I know from being in the music industry, artists really do cherish their brand and their image. And I think that that's true for everyone, no matter if you're a local mayor in Cookville or an artist. And I think that providing something that people can be proud of that they'll share to everybody they've ever known is important because if they didn't like it or weren't proud of it, then nobody would know about it. Cause those are the people I need to share what I'm doing with everyone they know. So I, I'm not going to do anything, you know, I'm not going to cuss, but half a SS <laughs> um, because then it would just be like, what's the point? I, I did work with media outlets that would do like these long interviews and then they would never promote them on social media or anything. And I'm like, well, what's, what was the point, you know? So I just, I don't think that you can cut any corners as far as quality of work, as far as photography and creative goes on these type of things, because then it becomes, nobody cares as much, you know? So, yeah. Well, Chelsea, you talk about wanting to have a product that people can be proud of. You have certainly accomplished that. Uh, the magazine is just like Shan said, it, it feels like you're reading a national publication when you pick it up. And what I love was you have these great uh, launch parties whenever a new issue of the magazine comes out. And that was so fun for Shannon and myself because uh, we record this podcast over Zoom, so we're not always getting to see each other in person. And we got to, to hang out at the launch party for this latest issue. There was an acoustic concert from Judah, and you made that possible. So, you know, thanks to you and your team for that. But just as we're celebrating the release of this latest issue of the magazine, I know you're already looking ahead to the summer 2024 issue. What can you tell us about that, as well as any other hopes or plans you have 
uh, for the magazine's future. Yeah, we typically get rolling on the next issue sometimes before the current one is even out, but normally like the next week when the the current one comes out. So we are, we've got several photo shoots scheduled for the next one. The summer issue is going to be our Movers and Shakers class of 2024. And I tell people it's like 40 under 40, but we're not putting 40 people in it. Um, <laughs> but it's kind of our version of that, um, celebrating young professionals in our community, whereas most influential people are other big, um, issue of the year celebrates more people that have already had very incredible long-standing careers. Um, so yeah, we're already in the plan planning process for our summer issue, and then we'll have our fall issue, and then our most influential people issue again to wrap up the year. But, you know, as far as the vision for the magazine, I, I want it to keep growing. I love the launch parties, like you said. I feel like it's just a time for us all to come together and celebrate everybody. And um, it's it grows every time. I'm like, oh Lord, where are we going to have to do this next? Because <laughs> my list keeps getting longer, but I, it's, it's so, it's always so much fun and everyone is just happy. And, um, it's just such a community, community type thing that I feel like it's a community brand lifestyle that people are buying into. And I just want to keep building on that. You know, I, I don't really think I'll ever move to bi-monthly because, quarterly is enough, I think. Um, and I just keep, I want to keep building the, the online platform too, and, um, the website and keep creating fun lifestyle type articles to put on there that might not be right for the magazine because they might not be evergreen or they might have a time limit or, you know, things like that. But, um, yeah, I just keep building it. I'm just trying to keep doing what's working, which is, the magazine. And then when I have free time, you know, <laughs> pour into other aspects of it. I don't know that you're going to run into a lot of free time. We're going to have to evolve this in a different way, Chelsea. <laughs> but speaking of time, it's time for a few rapid fire questions. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. You're going to tell us the first thing that comes to mind. The best thing about living in Cookville. The people. I love it. The best or worst celebrity run-in while working as a publicist? <sighs> okay, well, I think I have two that I have to say. So <laughs> one was backstage at the ATM Awards um, in Las Vegas. My all-time favorite artist is Garth Brooks, and I am not a fangirl of artists at all because I'm just jaded from working in the music industry, but I am a fangirl of him. I will buy tickets to all of his concerts until the day I die. But he had just come off. I was actually on the stage of the ACM Awards. Um, and I think I was there with Clay Walker. And he had just come off the stage. And he came up to my mom. My mom was with me, which was so fun. Um, and he took his hat off and tipped it. Like, he tipped his hat to my mom and shook her hand and then, like, gave us hugs. And one of my friends captured it all on photo with photos and it, it, that was really fun. And then another one, I was in LA again for NAM, which is like a merchandising music, co music conference that they have every year. And Stevie Wonder, I met him, um, which was really cool. Like something you never think you're going to meet Stevie Wonder, but that was also a surreal moment. <laughs> Chelsea, you're going to finish this sentence. If I wasn't a magazine publisher or a former publicist, I would be... I think I would be doing like computer tech or something. Something that has no stress, nobody like... <laughs> holding you to standards that are hard to meet and you could just clock in and clock out. <laughs> wow. I wouldn't see that about you. So yeah. the, the, the manual labor, the, the grunt laborer you're interested in on the high tech side. Okay. <laughs> Favorite or most interesting person you profiled in Cookful Lifestyle? Um, there, everyone has been, I love, I learned so much about people. Most of these people, I don't even know before we feature them. And I learned so much about people and I, do not know how most of these people are able to do all the things they do in a given day. Um, but I did learn so much when we profiled the Fronings. I learned so much about what they do and they're not, I just do not know how they're able to get all the things done. Uh, they have so many businesses and they contribute to our local economy more than most people realize, I think. So I think just really learning the ins and outs of everything they've accomplished and their hearts 
was really cool. And then of course, Judah was cool because I didn't know all of his struggles and he really opened up um, and was raw and authentic um, in his interview. So that was awesome as well. But I mean, I, that's a hard one to answer. Oh, I'm sorry, that wasn't rapid fire, but. <laughs> <laughs> that's all right. You know, uh, Judah, uh, interesting trivia behind the scenes. I emceed an event so many years ago and they said, hey, we have this cute little guy that we're going to bring out and he's going to perform during intermission. And, um, you know, he's really talented. And Judah at the time was a very young teenager. And he performed with his little band on stage at CPAC for us during some event. I don't even know what the event was, but we were all like, oh, he's amazing. He's going to really go somewhere someday. <laughs> and he and I had him autograph um, one of our little brochures, the little pamphlet of whatever the event was. And I remember him signing it. And I thought, you know, I wish I had that now. I have no idea where that paper landed, but oh, well, it was it was my my fatal error. <laughs> Funny, yeah, he sent me a photo to possibly use in the magazine of him. I think it was like one of his first performances at Church on the Hill. And he was just a skinny little teenager and I, I didn't end up, it didn't work within the layout or anything, but um, I was just like, wow, that's funny. Cause he didn't start music. You know, most people start music when they're 10, you know, and he didn't start until he was in college. So really, um, but anyway, that's so funny. Well, Chelsea, we like to end each interview with the same question, regardless of whether our guests are Tennessee tech faculty, staff, students, alumni, or uh, somebody like you who studied elsewhere for school, but is obviously such a valuable partner to the university. And that question is, what is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? Um, from the first day of the magazine, when I profiled Phil and Carrie Oldham, that impacted the magazine's trajectory, I feel like, in a huge way, uh, because everyone was like, wow, I can't believe you got them to do this. <laughs> I don't know how either, but they did. And ever since then, Tech has been an incredible partner to the magazine. Um, and I love being distributed on Tech's campus because it opens me up to a young audience. And that's hard to, it's hard to reach that demographic nowadays with social media and, you know, all the things. So I just love how they've embraced me and what I'm doing. And in turn, I love supporting what you all are doing. So I think it's just a great partnership. I agree. And I, I want to tell you, we are in a building, at my office in Foundation Hall with the College of Business students right now. And whenever a new issue of the magazine comes out, uh, it never fails. I'll pass by and I'll see students gathering together and reading your magazine. So you definitely have a following here at Tech. Uh, Chelsea, thanks so much for being our guest today on College Town Talk. Thank you guys so much for having me. I love you both dearly, and I can't wait to see you soon. <laughs> the feeling is mutual. And for our <laughs> listeners, you can find the latest issue of Cookville Lifestyle free at dozens of distributor locations across Cookville, including right here at the Cookville Visitor Shop or at Tennessee Tech. Learn more and see a full list of distributor locations at cookvillelifestyles.com. Welcome back, everybody. March is Women's History Month, but our next guest is someone who leads, educates, and inspires women and men on the Tennessee Tech campus all year round. Dr. Helen Hunt is the director of the Women's Center at Tennessee Tech University, which was founded in 1993 and leads and supports efforts for women's equity across campus and the community. She's also an associate professor of English at Tennessee Tech, specializing in early American literature and a two-time winner of Tech's Award for Excellence in Creative Inquiry. Her work has appeared in Legacy, a journal of American women writers, early American literature, J19, the Journal of 19th Century Americanists, New Perspectives on the 18th Century, and Studies in American Fiction. 
Dr. Hunt, welcome to College Town Talk. Thank you so much for having me. It is my pleasure to be here. Well, Dr. Hunt, we obviously want to talk about your important work at the Women's Center and the great events and programming you all host throughout the year. But we'd love to start by asking you about your journey to Tennessee Tech. Now, as I understand, you've been at the university for about eight years now, so congratulations on that. Uh, but you've lived all over the country, including in California, Michigan, I believe Indiana. So what brought you to Tennessee Tech? And can you tell us about those first impressions of not only tech, but also Cookville? Sure, yes. So the year that I got the job at Tennessee Tech, uh, so I have kind of a specialized field of early American literature, and there just aren't that many of us who study it. And that means there just aren't that many jobs either. So the year that I applied for this job, there were only 10 in the country. So I got this one. So here I am. <laughs> I was happy to have found this job in the first place, and then very happy to have ended up in Cookville. It was um, I was living outside of Detroit when I got this job, and so Cookville was a much smaller town, but it also surprisingly felt a lot to me like where I grew up in California, um, because I lived in kind of more of an agricultural small town for California, which was 20,000 people, which I realize is not necessarily small for around here. But Cookville was quieter, and I loved the access to the outside. I've always loved hiking and the waterfalls were amazing. So I was really happy of all of the places I could have ended up to have it be Cookville. Now, Dr. Hunt, the Women's Center is such an asset to Tennessee Tech and also an important resource, not just to the students, but the entire university community. Now, for those who aren't familiar, would you tell us more about the Women's Center and how did you come to serve as its director? Definitely. So I think of the Women's Center as having three kind of core missions. Our overall goal is to help improve gender equity at tech and in the wider community. And we do that in three major ways. We try to provide educational programming, um, we are have our own resources, and we're also a gateway to other resources. So if you need something but don't exactly know how to get it, you can come to us and we can help connect you to what the ways you can get the things that you need. And also we try to create a social sphere or a social community of people who have, you know, who are also invested in gender equity and the work of gender equity and who want to help make tech and our wider community feel welcoming and friendly to everyone. So that's kind of how I think of our mission. Um, and then also I came to serve as its director because uh, the previous director had retired and they were looking for a director for the Women's Center. And the way this position works is a little bit strange because it's not a full-time position. You have to be a faculty member and then you um, serve part-time as the director. And I wasn't sure if I was going to apply at first because it was right before I was gonna go up for tenure. And I just wasn't sure I was gonna have the time to make sure I finished all of the things I needed to do to get tenure and still be able to apply and then manage this position. But then I had an article acceptance come through right at the last minute. So I knew I was gonna be able to make tenure. And I was like, okay, I definitely want to do this because it really resonates with the work that I do and the service I was already doing in the community. All of my work is around, um, basically women's representation in literature, how we imagine what women can do, what kinds of relationships women can have, what kinds of pleasures women can have in their lives and what kind of stories we tell about women. And so it was really kind of already aligning with my core goals. So I was in a position to go for it and I was very happy that I did. Well, I think a lot of people at the university are also very happy that you did, uh, Dr. Hunt. And I, you know, I think one of the things that is cool about the Women's Center is that it's not uh, static, right? There, there's always new events, new art displays, new things to see and experience. Uh, so tell us about what visitors to the Women's Center can expect to find uh, at the center this semester. And can you maybe give us a preview of some of what's coming up in the weeks and months ahead? Certainly. So I'm so glad you talked about our space because we're up in the third floor of the University Center or the RUC as people describe it. And we have two really cool things about our actual space if you decide to come visit us. And one is a gallery. So we have this kind of tiny little nook that's the perfect space for student art. And so we give an award every well, we'd give two awards a year that are an exhibition award with a cash prize that's funded by our donors for student art to be exhibited in our space. And the art we have up right now is called Circadian by a textiles artist um, who is a senior this 
year. It's very cool. She made this whole like exhibit of um, like quilted pieces that think about time and how we relate to time and how it relates to ourself. So you can come see our gallery and we also have a library. So we have our own library collection. It's part of the big library collection. You can check it out with your equal card or as a community borrower. And we focus on things like how um, like body positivity and eating disorder type things, uh, trauma survivorship, um, and also fiction with a wide range of different kinds of characters that maybe aren't your traditional characters that you see in fiction. So if you come to our space, you can see any of those things, which we would love to see. And coming up, we have March, obviously, is Women's History Month. We're, we're learning about the first woman to run the European Parliament with the Soiree Cine club. So one of the things that's exciting about being in this role is there's already all kinds of cool stuff that's happening across campus that's focused on women. And we can help highlight that and draw it together. And so we're also exhibiting a gallery walk of women in physics and other STEM fields at the end of March. Uh, and that is to bring attention to the contributions that women have made to science. I love that you're talking in ways that I can see that female students, it's showing what is possible for them, um, even what is probable now for them uh, being a woman. I, I love uh, your attitude about this and the opportunities that this is lending to your female students. Now, what I find so fascinating about you is that the Women's Center, like you said, is only one part of your role here at Tennessee Tech. You're also an associate professor of English and your research and writing is routinely published in literary journals and other publications. That is a really big deal. And I know that you're not one to brag about it, but I'm, I'm here to brag for you because I'm very uh, amazed by this. And how does how does that make you feel? Well, thank you. I mean, that's a nice it's always nice to hear that kind of appreciation, you know, and, you know, I'm like any other writer who definitely feels like worried about whether people are going to read my work or like my work and gets concerned about negative criticism. So I really appreciate you saying that, Shan. So it is um, a little difficult to juggle all the aspects of my job. I wouldn't say that I'm necessarily the best at it, and I'm especially bad at remembering dates. So thankfully, I have a really good admin here at the you know, at the center who helps kind of keep me on track, but I do my best to kind of segment things out and make sure that I'm really putting my attention to whatever I need to pay attention to in the moment, whether it's teaching my classes about the stuff that I love and with the students I love or, you know, working with the Women's Center events or doing the research and try to bring the passion to all that I do. Dr. Hunt, we like to end each interview with the same question, and that is, what is one way that Tennessee Tech has impacted your life? I've thought about this and I Tennessee Tech has shaped the entire future of my life. You know, I went from being, you know, a grad student and then a new PhD and just hoping that I was going to be able to do this work that I love. And then finding a home here at Tech where I've been able to pursue the scholarship and the teaching that I love and work with really truly amazing students. Um, and then also to get to pursue, like expand my work out into being able to be the director of the Women's Center. Tech has made a really rich, beautiful life for me. And I'm very thankful for it. And I'm excited for, I mean, I hope that I've helped encourage the students and the community here to, to be able to embrace the big possibilities that they have for their lives too. You talk about Tennessee Tech being a home for you. I think that uh, your um, instruction in the classroom and the work of the Women's Center has helped make Tech a home uh, for a lot of other people, a lot of students as well. And so Dr. Hunt, thank you so much for being our guest today on College Town Talk. Oh, it's been my pleasure. You've had such wonderful people on. I'm really glad to get to have been a part of it. And for our listeners, learn more about the Women's Center at Tennessee Tech by visiting tntech.edu slash women. We want to thank Chelsea D'Artez and Dr. Helen Hunt for being our guests today on College Town Talk. And thanks to all of you for tuning in each week. Be sure to hit that subscribe button, leave us a review, and share it with your friends. You can also catch up on previous episodes of the podcast at tntech.edu slash college town talk. We'll meet you back here again next week for more conversations with the people who make Cookville, Tennessee's college town. <music> 
College Town Talk is presented by Tennessee Tech University in partnership with the Cookville Putnam County Visitors Bureau. Your hosts are Jonathan Frank and Shan Stout, and original music is performed by Andrew Buckner. Visit us online at tntech.edu slash collegetowntalk.